a secret research endeavor under the direction of the British Admiralty, led to the development of a unique weapon that would change the course of maritime warfare during World War II. The result of trial and error, this anti-submarine projector turned the tides against the Nazi U-boats and wreaked havoc in the Pacific. Instead of dropping depth charges on submerged submarines and causing damage from hydrostatic shockwaves, a different approach to outperform them was conceived early in the war. The idea was to design a device that would fire spigot mortars ahead of a ship and have them detonate only when they hit a hard surface. Though the original Fairly mortar device was unsuccessful, a new idea sprung from the misadventure, and thus the Hedgehog was born. Named for its rows of launcher spigots, which resembled the spines of the creature when devoid of a load, the Hedgehog would not only redeem the Fairly, but become one of the most feared weapons against the dreaded German submarines. Wartime Innovations After the outbreak of World War II, the German U-boats became a perilous threat for the Allied fleet in the Atlantic. Thus, the British were in desperate need of a new weapon that could balance the scale. The top-secret project was carried out by the Directorate of Miscellaneous Weapons Development, a department of the British Admiralty. The idea was to build a weapon that would be more lethal than conventional depth charges. A first attempt was tested in 1941, called the Fairly Mortar, but it resulted in failure. However, the lessons learned would eventually give way to the Hedgehog, an innovative mortar capable of launching dozens of projectiles at a time. The multiple spigot mortar, or spigot discharger, was first developed by Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Blacker, based on early infantry trench mortars. The concept consisted of a single device capable of launching multiple target warheads of different sizes. As part of the primary weapon, the propelling charge worked against a rod, which was set in a base plate, and then fitted inside a tubular tail stemming from the charger's body. Initially, the concept was used on the Blacker Bombard 29mm spigot mortar, and later the PIAT anti-tank weapon. Thereafter, the principle was adapted for naval use in partnership with the head of military intelligence research, Major Millis Jeffries. Notably, Jeffries brought the Blacker design for use in the Army. The Hedgehog could fire a salvo of 24 small bombs directly ahead of a ship. The trajectory was calculated by a mathematical arch projection, with contact aimed within a circular or elliptical area of about 100 feet in diameter at 250 yards. The mounting was fixed at first, but was later replaced by a gyro-stabilized base, which enabled the attacking ship to roll and pitch more freely. Each mortar projectile carried a 35-pound torpex charge, measured 7.1 inches in diameter, and weighed 65 pounds. The angle of the spigots was positioned for a discharge with a diameter of 130 feet and ahead of the ship by 590 feet. While sinking, the bombs then descended at 33 feet per second, which meant they could reach an enemy submarine at 200 feet in under 9 seconds. Remarkably, the charges would only detonate upon contact with a hard surface, resulting in more immediate and lethal damage to a submarine than depth charges that relied on hydrostatic shockwaves. Fitted at the bow of a ship, the impressive device increased the accuracy of anti-submarine weapons and forced the Nazis to innovate in return. Advantages Each of the Hedgehog's four cradles fired six projectiles in sequence and staggered to land simultaneously. As a result, the mounting did not receive excessive stress, which avoided the need for deck reinforcement and allowed the weapon to be smoothly retrofitted whenever needed. Moreover, reloading took no more than three minutes. In addition, the system solved the problem of a potential target submarine disappearing from sonar and losing contact when getting closer than the technology's minimum range. The characteristics of the speed of sound when traveling through water led to a scenario where the echo return from a target was too short, and therefore a human operator couldn't distinguish the turning signal from the original pulse. The phenomenon, dubbed the instantaneous echo, caused both sounds to merge while the enemy submarine hid away from depth charge range. In other words, the situation created a blind spot, concealing the target submarine from the sonar, enabling it to execute evasive maneuvers and leave the scene undetected. Thus, a four-mounted weapon on the hunter ship's deck that could discharge projectiles over the bow while the enemy vessel was visible would give the Allies a tangible advantage in the Atlantic and Pacific. However, the mortar was less effective when facing deep targets. Although target depth was less important, its use on objects below 400 feet was discouraged. Regardless, getting one or two direct hits was usually enough to sink an entire submarine. Lack of Confidence The Hedgehog entered service in 1942, and after the new mortar was installed in about 100 ships, the submarine hits started coming. 
Initially, its success rate was only slightly better than that of depth charges, at about 5%. The launcher was frequently covered in swells and spray in the heavy North Atlantic weather, and incomplete patterns would be fired because of its state, as well as firing circuit problems. This would usually be a notorious reason for discontent among the crew. In early 1943, the Royal Navy employed the Hedgehog so intermittently that an order was issued for captains to report back on why they hadn't used the weapon upon contact with the submarine. Furthermore, the lack of experience and confidence in the Hedgehog contributed to the disappointing results. Consequently, improved training sessions and talks about the correct use of the novel weapon were implemented, and soon the Hedgehog's metrics improved considerably. By the end of the war, it was concluded that one in five mortar attacks resulted in a lethal hit. In contrast, less than one in 80 depth charges had the same result. The new weapon was so effective that the Kriegsmarine implemented an acoustic torpedo program in 1943. The new German homing torpedoes proved effective without using periscopes, allowing submarines to remain undetected and avoid counterattacks. However, the Hedgehog would wreak relentless havoc in the Pacific in mid-1944 due to the skillful crew aboard the mythical USS England. Unmatched Performance USS England was a Buckley-class destroyer escort named after the Pearl Harbor hero and St. John C. England. Destroyer escorts were a cheaper and smaller alternative to Navy destroyers, and instead of engaging in fleet battles, they were tasked with the less exciting task of escorting convoys of slower merchant ships across the world's oceans. The humble England had a weight of 1,400 tons and a crew of 186. In contrast to more powerful destroyers, England was armed with three 3-inch guns rather than 5-inch ones, 12 anti-aircraft guns instead of 20, and three torpedoes instead of 10. But among her anti-submarine armament, the Hedgehog stood out. On May 18, 1944, England and two other destroyer escorts were directed to intercept a Japanese submarine headed towards the Solomons. The following afternoon, the destroyer escort sonar identified submarine I-16. According to Captain John Williamson, England's executive officer, the ship attempted four attack runs over the Japanese to deploy the Hedgehog, but I-16 cleverly outmaneuvered her by following the attacker's course. However, four to six hits detonated on the fifth attempt, much to the crew's delight. The stern was lifted six inches and then plopped heavily. Williamson recalled, quote, We had, with cataclysmic certainty, heard the last of one Japanese submarine. Later that month, the Imperial Japanese Navy implemented Operation Ago, an extreme approach to confront the Americans in one last decisive engagement. To begin with, seven submarines were to block the northeast side of New Guinea, an expected path for the Americans. The front line of submarines would give the Japanese an early warning, but more importantly, they could sink enough enemy vessels to affect the outcome of the upcoming battle. But unbeknownst to the Japanese, the Americans had cracked their codes and deciphered their orders. Consequently, they sent England and her two companions to the Japanese line, smashing them one by one. On May 22nd, USS George detected the Japanese RO-106 submarine cruising inadvertently on the surface. After being illuminated by the ship's searchlight, the submarine dived but struggled to flee. England struck her with a hedgehog run, marking at least three hits. The bubbling in the surface confirmed the end of the enemy vessel. The following two days, England destroyed RO-104 and RO-116. Then, on the 26th, a hunter-killer anti-submarine task force reached the small fleet. The takeover allowed the destroyer escorts to head to Manus for resupply. Fortunately, England contacted and sank RO-108 while on the way. After resupplying, England and her companions steamed for the remainder of the Japanese line. Then, on the morning of May 30th, the destroyer Hazelwood spotted RO-105, and several ships joined the hunt, including George and Raby. England, however, was ordered to stay back. Following an entire day of chasing and unsuccessful attacks, England offered to help, but as Williamson remembered, the reply was, quote, We are not going to tell you where we are. We have a damaged sub, and we are going to sink her. Do not come near us. Suddenly, RO-105 emerged on the surface, directly between the destroyer escorts, blocking their mutual fire. Out of choices, Division Commander Haynes radioed, quote, Oh hell. Go ahead, England. England then scored between six and ten hedgehog hits, resulting in a major explosion that ended up with loads of oil and debris floating on the surface. To this day, USS England has the record for most submarines sunk by a single ship, with six victims in 12 days. With help from the Hedgehog, out of the seven Japanese submarines originally lined up, five were destroyed, foretelling the end of the Pacific War. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. 
Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more content about the World Wars.